welcome everyone to another episode of Weekly Games Chat. Happy Fourth of July. All that good stuff, right? Yeah. America. I am Chris, as always, joined by my co-host Sean. What is up? And we sent John away. Yeah, he's somewhere where it's hot, I think. Yeah, almost as hot as here, I'm sure. Well, it, I think the world is just hot right now. It's crazy. What is it? Like, Northeast, I've seen the other day, was hitting all these record highs. Yeah. And then I know it's, I grew up in that whenever it would happen, you know, happen a couple times where I'm up there. I don't think, like, people understand down here as much because we get the heat consistently. And it's humid, right? It's, yeah. It's humid. It's bad. Up there... From July to September, right? It's unbearable because the humidity here is high. The humidity there is probably the highest in the United States because it's all swamplands. And they also, <laughs> they actually have a, uh, I, what I'm trying to say is I guess we're kind of seasoned down here, right? Yeah. Because we're, we're mostly warm all the time. Yeah. Kind of. We have mild winters mm-hmm. up there. They literally have like a winter. Yeah, they do have a winter. They have they have seasons still. So like when it's hot, it's hot. Yes, you know what I mean. So you go to Washington, uh, D.C., and there are days that you just <laughs> you feel like you're gonna fall out. It's just so bad. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I, I don't miss it one bit. Al Gore was he right? <laughs> Uh, he made another one <laughs> sequel. <laughs> I think it's out somewhere. Go check it out. Oh I haven't God. checked it out yet. <laughs> That's so awesome. What did yeah. you get into this week? Um. I've been babysitting John's dogs. Yeah, you have. You put a picture out on Instagram today. Or yeah. Was it Instagram? Uh, yeah, it was Instagram. Yeah, it was, of, uh, of your dog, Penny. Yeah. And the infamous... <laughs> Burgess. Burgess. Her boo. <laughs> her who's boo. like twice the size of her, <laughs> but she's the man in that relationship. Yeah. Like she consistently is just coming over and like, look, you know... I'm ovulating. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you been able, John's also speaking of infamous, his internet speed. Oh God. It's so, it's amazing. So, you know, to pass the time, I don't have my computer there because, you know, desktop, I'm it's, not going to move it. Right. Um, so I brought NBA 2K, which is all I really need. I've been off work, you know, that's all I need. And I, um, I made a decision. It was a very rash decision. Uh, but I felt like, you know what? We're two months out. I've got all this VC. Like I have far much more VC than I will ever spend on Chris Love as he was. And Chris Love <laughs> had accomplished just about everything he could. Like he was a 94 overall yeah. at that point. He's legit. I mean, he's yeah. a, he's a, he's a veteran. Um, and VC you've accumulated cause you've been, you play this game a lot. Yeah. And you get to these barriers where it's like, unless you're just out there buying everything, you kind of get to a point where if you're, if you're like me and you invest primarily your time into uh, doing the seasons and yeah. not actually playing online, like every game I got to a point I was earning about 1,500 coins. So like you think, 80 games a season, it Do adds math. up. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. It adds up. And then I have endorsements on top of that. So like whenever I needed to buy something, I would wait. And I would just go and be like, oh, here's your 13,000 BC to go spend. And it's like, okay, buy my upgrades, my like boost upgrades that yeah. come in. And go about my way. But uh, I decided to retire Chris Love. He is retired officially. He's a retired as like a six-time NBA champion, <laughs> uh, five-time NBA uh, MVP, yeah. rookie of the year. He's the greatest of all time. He, yeah, you could make an argument that yeah. he's up there. If, yeah. he had, if he had decided to play out his whole career. So he's pulling a Barry Sanders and he's calling it quits early. I'm going to play baseball. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Makes sense. I create a new character because I your VC transfers over to all the your, game. That's why, yeah. that's how they make their money. It's like, you know, you have my team and, and yeah, all yeah. those kinds of things. So like people will play my team consistently and save up and save up and then go spend on their character, their, my career character to play online. And then maybe they're playing that forever and they'll take that back. And now it's like, Oh, I can go buy card packs and, and get all that more stuff. Yeah. yeah. Without doing it. Or you're just a, you know, a money whore and you just, spend 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 give them tons of money for vc but i had like yeah three hundred thousand saved up so i just went ahead and created a new character um it's still chris love but he's still a point guard but i made him instead of like i usually make him short and fast and kind of like a true point guard like he is his things are ball handling and three-point shot so you know i could i was averaging towards the end there i was averaging about 18 sister game broke john stockton's like 
season all record, record yeah, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Um, this time I made him like six, five and he does one thing and one thing only. He's a pure slasher. So all he does is driving and inside scoring and he's got 99 layup skills, 99, uh, dunk skills. So he's like balling out when he he's learned. pretty much like, he's a little bit shorter than LeBron, but he's a LeBron to point guards because you know, you have like little, even like Russell Westbrook cannot stop me right now. Yeah. And I went ahead and I was able to upgrade him straight to 85 and I've been slowly upgrading him, but I'm averaging already like 55 points a game, <laughs> all, all on layups and dunks because he cannot shoot more than five feet away from the basket. Yeah. Uh, but it's been fun. But the thing, the reason I bring <laughs> that up to in connection to John's internet is, uh, when you start the game, right? NBA 2K has this thing that they release a new episode every week called NBA 2K TV. Kind of keeps you going on what's in the community, shows you top plays. They usually have interviews with NBA stars, all this cool stuff. Every time I'd start up, I would just get this loading image and I would just go ahead and skip and go straight to the pregame. Cause you're like, there's no way. Yeah. John's, John's internet's like, this is, this is a little much. Don't you it, think? It's not going to happen. Look, we connected to PlayStation Network. Let's tone it down. I <laughs> thought about John. I was at, uh, I was at, I was shopping and my neighbor that lives across from me actually was in the same store. He comes up and he's like, Hey, do you know much about like internet and stuff like that? I was like, well, I mean, I know basic stuff, maybe a little more intermediate, but I'm not like, yeah, I'm not going to route your house and stuff. You're not. Yeah. You're not saying up a whole entire so he's fiber like, optic. Uh, <laughs> none of that. But he's like, so, so right now I've got this combo router. Combo. I was like, first off, get rid of the combo router. Mm-hmm. Get you a modem and a separate router. It just, it just works better. It does. Uh, I agree. But second, I was like, who do you have? And he, he, so in my area, there's two. Let's just say company A is, <laughs> is the one that's named after the city I live in. We'll call that, uh, hot garbage option number one. And then the other one is direct TV and AT&T. Kind of hot option number or hot garbage <laughs> so, option. <laughs> so I had started hearing rumors that the AT&T may have fiber in our area. That those were false. And then I also heard that they were actually because it wasn't, a lot of people chose option one that it actually held up and was pretty good. Friend of the show, Jeff, I believe has yeah that option, right? Mm-hmm. So, but then, it's cable. then I run into him and he's like, something's just wrong. Yeah. He's like, he I, said issues. He, uh, or my neighbor guy, he's like, I can't, I can't get past like three meg. What? <laughs> I was like, what are you paying for? He's like the 50 meg option. Yeah. I was like, um, bruh. <laughs> you might need to call somebody. It's amazing. Uh, we live our area of the country. If you're wondering listeners, uh, we always say we're Georgia. I'm in Georgia. Sean's in Alabama. Johnson, Georgia. And like literally the only thing that separates us is a river and it is amazing. The quality of internet that is available <laughs> on, on one, one side. side of yeah. the river. It's almost like you feel like, um, <laughs> If anyone's seen Parks and Rec, there's a there's a running joke throughout the show that Pawnee, which is where the main characters are, is kind of like trash. And then this other side of town that's called Eagleton is like the high <laughs> res, you know, yeah. uppity folks. We're Eagleton. You guys are Pawnee. Definitely. And it's crazy because it's really in the pocket of the city that yeah. I live in that a guy many years ago, it, you have to give him props. He went and he was buddy buddy with council members and. He basically inked a contract that says, I'm going to be the cable and internet provider for this area for so like ever. You're saying that Phoenix City <laughs> had some corrupt deals. It's possible with their they, politicians. It's possible there may have been some, uh, suspect, you know, things that happened back in the day with Phoenix City. Inside knowledge, listeners, uh, Phoenix City has a very long history. That, I mean, to a point where people have written books on it yeah. of corruption and murder. The river that Chris talked about, there actually used to be... Chattahoochee. Uh, supposedly, there used to be um, shoots yes. out of certain buildings that were near the river where things may have been you know, dumped out in and whatnot. We'll just call them bodies. Well, I, and, I'm, and I'm associated with Phoenix City. I'm kind of outside of it. But yeah, and I'm just in between that little bubble where I can't get the Auburn, the college town yeah, yeah. internet people. Which is good. Which is outstanding. They actually service, like you said, the Columbus, Georgia area. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm that guy, but I, I, I've got, I'm decent. So what was I playing the other day? And I had, uh, something and I thought of John's internet. I was like, wow. Warcraft. Was, no, it was something where I got an update. And for some reason, sometimes I'll think about John's slow internet. Oh God. And yeah. I was like, I can't imagine John having to get this, but I don't even remember. like <laughs> I had to, you know, I, John's to, internet. I, I moved all my uh, <laughs> saves to the cloud and then downloaded them to John's uh, PlayStation. 
And even that, like what would normally take four seconds took about a minute. And I'm just like, God, you yeah, save files. And, and it had to download. <laughs> I didn't even think about this because I was installing the game to a system for the first time. I had to download a five gig update. Yeah. And that was like about an hour and a half. So I just <laughs> walked away. Did just some walked away, stuff. checked yeah. the old cumin yeah. uh, mm-hmm. account, make sure you had enough cumin in the house. Actually, the, 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 Revelation this time is I looked up and I've noticed John has like 18 rolls of like humongous rolls of toilet paper or not toilet paper, uh, just paper, paper towels, towels. Yeah. just like waiting. I'm like, why do you need this much at one time? At Are some you point, afraid? My mom's the same way. And she says it, she says it doesn't make sense to not buy the, you know, gigantic packs. I'm like, well, I don't understand. I get that. Like, but there was probably at least 15. <laughs> and I mean, like, they looked like they were triple rolls. So, so I was like, what they, the heck? Do they go to Sam's Club? Uh, maybe they do. I just that, feel like they're like waiting for their pipes to burst and they'd be like, like it's we're okay. Good. We're good. <laughs> Cause we I'm got duct tape and we got these towels. <laughs> I remember back in the day when, when the whole human thing started, you said it was like a big thing of like huge bottle of it's still there. Right. And I'm, I'm wondering now you put two and two together. They have to go to like some sort of membership place like Sam's for sure, for sure or whatever. Did you ever go see Jurassic Park this weekend? I almost went yesterday and I did not. Yeah. We were did at a, go? no, we were at a function, Chris and I, um, on last Friday and we were thinking about maybe getting up to a movie. It was hot. It was so hot. God, it was hot. It was really hot. Yeah. I, I did something stupid where I, I, uh, I got in it. Imagine a go-kart with no motor, but pedals <laughs> instead. <laughs> oh, yes. And the aforementioned heat was definitely relevant at this event. And I decided that I was going to race another guy. I like how you tried to entice me to do this. And I just, <laughs> I looked at the logic and I said, mm, well, I you, think buddy, go I right lost ahead. the race. Uh, the other guy was, he was longer yeah, he legged than me. And I think what happened That's is what you're going they, had, like I think they adjusted my seat. Uh-huh. I didn't get enough torque like he got. Okay. Excuses. But he, he smoked me. And oh yeah. He did. He, he won. Uh, we were going to go three laps and I made it two, uh, <laughs> and let him have a victory lap because <laughs> I'm surprised he even wanted to do that. Cause he looked to be fair when he got done, he looked like he was about to die just as quickly as you were. Yeah. It was no joke. It's one of those where you're like, <laughs> 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 yeah, it was bad. But other than that, man, um, you mentioned Warcraft. I have kind of been playing that with your your bestie. Oh yeah. Where have you been? You been on Discord with us? Well, I've been at John. This is true. We just talked about that. Yeah, you're dumb. And imagine bringing up Discord, uh, and like an internet page plus like PlayStation plus yeah. out. No, <laughs> it's it's, like it's out. not gonna happen. <laughs> well, cool, man. Um, John, wherever you are, I hope you are having a good time. I'm sure he is because I know John's. John's the kind of person that's going to download this to listen to us just to see what we say about him. Of course he is. Because that's what he does. Now, Jeff, friend of the show, Jeff's in the Bahamas. He is back, I is think. Is he now. technically back? I think he, I think he got technically back in the United States yesterday. And then I, well, I guess he never left because that is part of the United <laughs> States. But in theory, back, Chris. Back to the mainland <laughs> yesterday. And I think he's supposed to be home today. Oh, well, cool. Because we have a beer that we brewed. And uh, I know how much he needs Wait, to pay attention to that. You you brewed it at his crib, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. Well, they look like they had a good time, so that's always good. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, man, we've just been rocking and rolling. Other than that, man. Other than that, man. Yeah, by the time like you guys hear this. Dale Earnhardt just walked in. <laughs> by the time you guys hear this, man, <laughs> it's going to be July 4th. And because America, we might have a beer, man. Yeah. Well, I can make that happen right now <laughs> with, in the can of America. Beer, man. Um <laughs> I did, man, I have to say, it's been a real weird week in sports, too, right? Mm, mm. Germany lost. Which devastated me. I'm sorry. It's okay. Hey, hey, I have to say, before you came over, I watched England win on penalty kicks. Uh, Yeah. Going into the tournament, Germany's my team because, you know, like Nana... Mm-hmm. She she got me into soccer and yeah. that's what it is. They they look pitiful, they lose. But I watched the regular soccer, the English Premier League, and my favorite player is Harry Kane for England. He plays on Tottenham, which is my I favorite was just team. watching him. And uh yeah, so by default I'm obviously gonna go and plus they're like one of the few English speaking teams teams left. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, okay, I'll go for them. Take that Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, at some point I'm I, we're at work and a friend of I'll just say, I can say Gary. Let's just say Gary. Yeah, let's go also, with Gary. Who also likes soccer. That he does. Um, him and I are I, I instant messaging each other about what's going on and how crazy it is. And at one point, the Colombian team, like, they were not happy with anything that was going on. I did not see this yeah, part. Yeah, if you missed that part, 
And he eyes me and he goes, the Columbia needs a Snickers. And it was a funny line because, you know, if you've seen the Snickers commercials. <laughs> but this game, I, I don't know how soccer players do it. Dude. You, you get down to a point and now you're going to win or lose a game by penalty kicks. Yeah. It's insane. Imagine if like the NBA had a thing where it's like, okay, everyone, we're, we're about to go shoot free throws and that's going to be the NBA champion. Good luck. <laughs> or, or you got a dunk, one on one dunks on, on, on like the centers. That'd be funny. You know what I mean? Just like a dunk off to win the game. That would just be funny. Cause you had, cause the penalty kicks get defended. So you have to figure out a way to, to defend it. I'm just like imagining everyone would have a seven footer on their team right? just, just for, for just for that. Dude comes out for the dunk off, rips his clothes off, you know, like the ballers do. And it's like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> George Mirasan's back. <laughs> would be the greatest thing ever. Like Shaq is just still playing and this is a, the only thing he does. And, uh, apparently last night, uh, DeMarc, uh, Mr. Cousins, ah, boogie broke deci- my heart, decided he was going to join the, the team that will never be beaten again. Let's just talk about like how <laughs> crazy the NBA has been for the last, I don't know, three, four days. Yeah. I mean, as like, soon as free agency started, it's been off the chain is the greatest. And to be fair, this is a precursor because next summer is even more crazy. Yeah. It's like about 20 star players who are all up for, for free agency. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Um, so you know, you get to you get to midnight on Sunday, and all of a sudden, boom! Chris Paul's going back, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Paul George is remaining in OKC, which no one saw coming. And to give you guys a, the reason that was a big deal is because there was a big rumor, yeah, that LeBron James, uh, you should know his name, even if you don't follow basketball, uh, was talking to to Chris Paul, which is his friend. He was talking yeah. to Paul George. Uh, LeBron was wanting to go to the Los Angeles Lakers, yeah, possibly, and bring some people with him. Well, these two people, like Chris said, they signed with their teams. So guess yeah. what LeBron did, Chris? And he tried to get him to come to Houston. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that was the surprising part. He tried to get him to come, and then all of a sudden he signed a max deal. So that pretty much negated there that goes chance. That. Yeah. <laughs> but you go from that to then, yeah, LeBron comes out and says he's going to the Lakers, which really didn't surprise me. Um, In a way it did because – he hates Dan Gilbert so much. I knew he was I know. leaving. I, I, I knew he was going to leave Cleveland. I, yeah. I think I wanted him to go to, to the, to the uh, Wizards. <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. I was going to dream, but. But I mean, that was that some young me, talent. That would make me happy. Uh, no, not the Wizards, the, uh, the Sixers. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sixers would have been nice. Yeah. I think though they had so many issues, like because they just had to fire their GM because of that burner phone oh. stuff. And I think like what it is is honestly he's just to a point in his career where he's willing to understand next year he's probably not going to win it. You know he's fine with that. That's cool. Yeah, he wanted a place where he'll be there for four years, right? Yeah. And that's apparently where his sons want to go to high school and they will both be in high school. Had, they've had a house there. Yeah. And it's possible mm-hmm. that at some point, I think somebody said the math would work out where LeBron Jr. could technically play on the same team as him. In theory. I mean, if he plays. It would be at the very end of LeBron, LeBron's career. LeBron. <laughs> LeBron. I think like some people, you know, and of course you just never know because of injuries, but if the man keeps it up, some people think the man, if he wanted to, could probably play well into his forties, kind of be like the Tom Brady of basketball where it's like, you've gotten to that point where if you're, <laughs> if you're this kind of yeah. freak yeah. and you're a naturally skilled guy at the game, you got the knowledge with the conditioning you can do now. It's possible. It is possible. But we'll see. We'll see, man. I don't yeah. know. Uh, but there will be, um, FIFA World Cup updates by me for the next couple of weeks. The tournament ends on the 15th of July. The happiest moment today. Yeah. Uh, my uh, aunt, who is from England, lives there. She was going ape on Facebook. Yeah. Because, you know, for those who don't know, England has a long history of failed penalty kicks. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's like the, like the last three they've been in, I think, 90, 98, and 2006. Yeah. They lose, like, big games on penalty kicks. Like, they can't Pretty do much. it. Pretty much. It's it, always what gets them. If you don't care... England basically invented soccer. <laughs> the Aztecs and they, are like somewhere going like, oh, really? <laughs> they they need to win. I think it'd be good. So we'll see how this plays out. No no country, I will say, gets behind like their own. Like um, even like uh, every year when you'd watch Wimbledon or something like that, everyone, the only thing they care about is will a British man finally hey, win the dang thing. And that's on now too. Yeah. yeah we got, I, was, I got a coworker there. I was just thinking this is there. a, it's a weird time where it's not like football season. Right. But there's a lot of good sports stuff going on. A major tennis tournament, a major soccer tournament. I think it says a lot about baseball when 
everyone on TV right now is just talking about basketball free agency and not a word is going on about baseball, which is and it's really the All-Star weird. Star break. Yeah. Which is even crazier. It's like so weird when you consider how our childhood was. Yeah. All, all we cared I about mean, was baseball. Yeah. Baseball was the forefront of everything. Sure. People cared about the NBA, but you know, that ended in June and yeah, then boom, it's baseball, you're baseball right. for the rest of the summer. And now baseball it's, mm. and it's going to be like, okay, well, you know what? Training camp opens in uh, two weeks. <laughs> exactly. So. Spring game, or not spring game, the kickoff football, it's like in August. Yeah. And you're like, here we go. Let's do this. We get to watch how many times Nick Saban can uh, practice <laughs> not saying who the uh, starting that, quarterback yeah, is. That Tua is the starting book. <laughs> we all know he's the starting quarterback, Nick. Just just announce it. Hey, and I'm, um, because of uh, my friend Matt, uh, I may be buying a computer. Oh, or building one. Oh, but it's going to be a tiny micro ITX. I'm just going to leave that out there. Okay. A- ATX. Sorry. Micro ATX. Nothing it's, wrong with that. It's going to look like a speaker. And that's the main reason I want to do it. <laughs> Screw all the peripherals. Like so, it's going to get so hot and just, <laughs> just terrible, but well, it looks like a speaker at least. There you um, go. We ready to do this? Uh, yeah. Looking at the, yeah, they got. 20 it, minutes it goes, of, yeah, no, it goes by so quick. They got 20 minutes of goodness. I think they're ready for you to talk about your game. I should probably start like putting like captions on here. Like, if you want to hear about the topic, go to this mark. <laughs> well, yeah, you could. I'm like, they might appreciate that, but we'll start that next week because, uh, because F that noise this week. Yeah, I'm <laughs> trying to get this thing produced because America and I gotta go back to John's house. <laughs> That's for sure. America. All right, All right let's, do, let's it. do it. Topic time, 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 time. The topic is Hollow Knight. Yeah. Brand new game that came out in 2017. <laughs> but it is, uh, we decided to finally do this because, uh, it has come out on the Switch. So there are a bunch of people now who are finding out about this game for the first time. Uh, it's only been out on PC before that. So yeah, it was on you know, PC. If you're not a person who peruses the Steams and all that, if you're mm-hmm. not part of the master race, as they say, um, there's a good chance you do not know what this is. It's not a major game, but it's gotten a lot of buzz. Uh, and I would say deservingly. And it's awesome that this game has come out there. You know, this is a good get for Nintendo because yeah. I, if you're just a console gamer, this is an excuse to have the Switch right now. Yeah. You know, uh, pick this up. When Nintendo announced it at their E3 that it was coming, everybody, it was, you, people were talking about it after their, uh, after their direct. So yeah. And it's kind of sucks because I missed out. Nintendo had it on sale for like $9. Oh dang. Leading up to like this week and I was going to get it and mm. then it's not on sale for $9 anymore, but it still is only $15. And John made a good point where he said, uh, dude, you still get like 30 hours of, is it 30 hours a game at least? Yeah, at least the game is going to take you and then this would be just blasting through it would take you 20. Yeah. And I would say for most people, it's going to take 30 to 40 hours. So that's still a good bang for your buck. And it, Chris, Chris had been playing it and he had it on last week when yeah. I came in and it's, it's a great little game. I'm anxious to see how far you got your thoughts on it, what it reminded you of. I had to, I've been trying to come over here and play, but honestly, um, it's one of those things where I've been at John. So I've just been at John. So the last couple of days, I've only gotten to play a little bit of it before but that though. I had been locked in. You've been, you've been locked in and, and even in the past couple of weeks when you were playing it, you showed me on Skype. Mm-hmm. Uh, how you got to these bosses or you drop yeah. down these pits with these bosses, right? Yeah. And it's fun. It's funny to, to see a gamer really have a challenge. Sure. Uh, and not want to get mad when the challenge kind of wins. That's yeah, where the funny part comes in. There have been, <laughs> now there are some bosses where you just get like, there's one, um, I cannot remember his name, but basically he can teleport throughout the room. And it is so infuriating just because <laughs> there are so many little cheap moves he has that he can capture you in. And like, there's no time to heal in that game or at least that fight. Other ones there usually is, but that one, it took me a good 30 tries to get to finally get him. Yeah. And um, that's 30 deaths in a row. Yeah. Before I finally <laughs> got him. And it wasn't like anything of like, I felt like I completely sucked. Like I would do a good fair amount of damage. It's just, 
it would be bad luck. Yeah. You know, I would, I would start out great and then all of a sudden it would just fall apart. And once it started falling apart, there was like nothing I could do. Yeah. And you're playing it with your Xbox controller. Like, so you have a, a yeah. console feel to it. Uh, when I saw the game, it looked a lot for me. I, I originally thought, Oh, this is kind of Ori ish. And you went, yeah, it's Castlevania Metroid ish. Yeah. Metroidvania is the technical term. Yeah. Yes. So. Um, so, I don't, I don't know much about it other than it was, you know, recently announced and I should get it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's by a little studio called Team Cherry. They're in Australia. Mate. So they, uh, they live in the upside down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the best way, like the impressive thing of this game, like they are four guys who made probably 90% of this. That's awesome. You love hearing that. Yeah. You really do. And apparently I was reading today, um, <clears throat> the way they designed the game was they designed all the mechanics and the levels and everything first. And then they went back and said, okay, now that we have this working and everything we like about it, let's focus on the lore. So they made the lore oh. work within yeah. what they could I do. I wonder if that's different than most people do. I, I mean, don't know. I don't I know think it just depends. Like yeah, everyone the- does it a little bit different. You know, of course some have, just a semblance of a story. Uh, this one definitely has a story to it. It's, it's pretty, um, is it heart wrenching like Ori? It's, it's definitely not a happy tale. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't look, the game's tone doesn't look happy. I mean, it's kind of got no. darkish tones to it. No, but that, well, see, that's the interesting thing that has nothing to do with it. You think it's going to be that way the whole way through. Mm-hmm. And when you start out, it is that way. Like, you know, the first couple of hours in the game, you're in this place, uh, these two primarily primary places are dirt mouth uh which is kind of like the uh the hub city where you do a lot of your upgrading and get your vendors and all that yeah and then uh the first major area which is called the forgotten crossroads and like pretty much yeah it's all you know grays blacks whites and and all that um and it can be very depressing but then like as you get out of that and you move into areas like the green leaves or something like that it's called uh to later on there are these like uh crystal caverns and all that you start to see all the different palettes that offers like, you know, it's like all of a sudden there's lush green leaves everywhere and everything. It's like, feels like it's got some life to it. Yeah. Um, and does that coincide with where you're like hidden in the story or what? Um, or no. Kind of, I mean cool. like you, you start to, as you explore, you start to get the idea that there are distinct regions in the game and there's a reason for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it ties back to the lore in a way without wanting to spoil anything. Yeah. Uh, but they all have like the thing that is impressive is that, yes, you don't feel like you're going through the exact same area every single time. Like cool. when you go to, uh, there's a place very early on called the city of tears. Uh, that is beautiful when you get there. And when you get to that, even though it's still dark in tone, mm-hmm. uh, it feels distinctively different than the forgotten crossroads from earlier. So, you know, you just, you're like you could go and just sit on a bench and just watch this water falling down all around you because the idea is that the city is built beneath a lake so it's consistently raining which is why it's called city of tears do you sit did you sit on a bench and look for a little while you 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 do sit on a lot of benches in this game because that's where you uh, (laughs) save (laughs) well i mean we we are too uh john may be this way i think he is too where if you see something, you know, kind of pretty in a video game, you're going to stop and look at it. You might even screenshot For it sure. as you should. Yeah. So, um, I, as you were talking, I, what, what is the main character? Like, what is it? Mm. Like, it's not, is it a human? Is it a ghost? Is it a, it is a knight. <laughs> it's a knight. Yeah. Uh, he is a nameless knight. Okay. Um, the idea is that he's been drawn to this place by, some unnamed force that's kind of encouraging him. And the idea is you, when you first arrive in dirt mouth and then proceed, <laughs> proceed around, you, you start to notice a couple of things. One, you can tell that this is an abandoned place where there used to be life. Right. And as you go in and you encounter things that the different creatures and all that, something's horribly gone wrong with them uh, and made them turn into very violent, um, <laughs> aggressive things that just yeah. attack everything. Uh, and as you explore the world, you start to meet a couple of characters and then more and more characters as it goes along that kind of start to give you context without going well in depth. Like you'll have, by the time I, I got towards the end of the game, I still haven't beat it, but I'm very close to the end from what I've gathered. You understand a lot of what's going on, but at the same time, there's enough there that you're like, 
you could have different theories as to how we got here. But the idea is like, yes, the city is falling apart and abandoned and, and you as a knight starting out, it's kind of like trying to figure out what the heck happened here and what's its purpose. Right. And then you meet, um, there's one character you meet very early on called the Hornet and she plays a, a very big part to giving you an understanding as far as what exactly is happening here and why this world has fallen into such disarray, so to speak. Uh, but it definitely has some emotional punches at, at moments. Yeah. The thing that's most impressive is, you know, you, you mentioned Ori and I, Ori is the far better looking game. Don't get me wrong on that because, yeah. you know, it is Ori. Ori's a, and like if you saw E3, we talked about how, uh, this game being at E3. Yeah. They show Ori too. And you're like, Oh my God. Yeah. This is why we They're, love Ori. Yeah. Like Ori is like when you don't have four guys, when you have like <laughs> 80 guys, you know, exactly. Um, but it is from a musical and artistic style and everything. It just consistently looks interesting and surprises. Yeah. And like when you get to these boss, uh, fights, it feels like, like you'll have a point, like sometimes when you're coming up on it, you'll have a point where like it gets dead quiet and then you jump down and all of a sudden the music just starts up and it feels right for whatever area you're in. Yeah. And as far as when you finally defeat that enemy and, and the calm that comes afterwards, it just, it feels nice. And then as you move into a new area, the change in music, it, you know, you automatically get a vibe for what this region is going to be like and what it, it's about to be. Uh, as far as you go through it. That's like, really cool, yeah. Yeah, the first time I went to Crystal Caverns, I was like, whoa, because there was just nothing like that in the game so far. And I, at that point, I was probably like 12 hours in. And I was like, God, this, you know, that's the problem that happens with a lot of these is that yeah. you start to get into a field that you're just doing the same thing over and, and over you, again. You don't feel like that. No, um, which is impressive too, because if there's one big knock on this, like it, it's a Metroidvania in the sense that literally the only things you can do when you start with this game is jump and swing your sword, which is in this he, game. Yeah. It's called a, uh, it's called a nail. Um, I so, why I did that. Oh, uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Like, why can't it just be called a sword? It looks like a nail. That's probably why. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of like a cone shape yeah. thing. But then like, as you, every time you defeat, well, not every time, but most of the time when you defeat a boss, you get some sort of new ability. So now you can like dash, you can, you know, oh, yeah. you can like jump and wall climb. And do that kind of thing. Yeah, watching you, there was some fast-paced kind of uh, platforming you were trying to do. Yeah, there's a ton of platforming in this game. And another credit I have to give, it's like I said, you could tell that uh, when I read that today, like where um, the game started out being designed first and then afterwards they worked on lore secondary. You can tell that because everything in the game feels tight. And that's very important for a game like this because it is a difficult game. It is not. Oh, it's no joke. Know, yeah. It, it's not in the sense of like Ori to me, for the most part, you know, you would die. But I would say 85% of those deaths would occur when you were doing the escape sequences. For the most part, as long as you were aware of what was going on and there was no penalty really for dying. You know, it's just like, okay, you died reload you know do it again yeah. and just keep doing it until you finally beat it with this when you die <laughs> there's a penalty is, oh no oh there's a penalty um for those who have played dark souls it's kind oh, of no. yeah it's kind of like that where every time you die um so in this game there's a currency called geo that you'll find throughout the world uh and you can use that to uh do things like you have to buy the map whenever you go into a new area. You have to go find the map maker. That's he travels around consistently, and you always yeah. have to. When you get to a new area, you have to go find him. You have to buy the map from him. You have to buy the fast travel points when you un uncover them. You have to buy gems, um, upgrades, all those kinds of things. So, Geo is pretty much your your lifeblood in yeah. this game. Um, and as you go through, whenever you die, you're soul basically gets split from you and all your geo goes with it and then you respawn wherever you last saved and you have to get back to it without dying to get all your geo back and if you die then you lose whatever geo was out there and then whatever geo you had on you the last time you died wherever you died then is where you need to go back to to repair oh yourself my God. so yeah like when you were <laughs> when you would hear me get upset it it's wasn't of that yeah it wasn't so much about the fact that 
like I died on the boss, that's fine. Like the boss fight really isn't that much of a thing like where I'm like, okay, whatever. Cause I understand it's learning the patterns and, and the bosses and getting, are hard. They are hard, but they, they have their tails and it's just learning what they are. And, and, then, and once you get them, then it, that's usually what it takes. Yeah. Like the, the one I was talking to you about, the one that made it so hard was that he was teleporting so much that literally it's just really hard to know precisely what, what he's going to do. Right, and it was right. very easy to make a mistake versus like some of these others, like early on, there's like a bug, like kind of looks like almost like a big bug that's in a cocoon or something in a way. Mm-hmm. And it jumps up and down. And like, you just kind of have to understand, like you quickly, the first time you fight, you might die, but you quickly but, figure out like the second time, okay, when this thing is jumping up and down, just, just avoid, just try to survive this and learn the pattern of where to go to. And then when it stops and turns around, that's your point to attack and you do your damage and you just wait it out and eventually boom, you're done. Um, the problem here is like with this kind of like dark souls again, it's not Ori in the sense where it's always a cakewalk to get back to where you are. So if you're going to a boss fight, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like that whole entire region uh, with the time traveling, like disappearing boss that you eventually get to has little mini guys just like it. And it is a pain to get past them without dying. You do not have much life in this game. So just I had gotten to a point at one point in this game where I had accumulated a very large amount of geo to a point where as I was going around, I never had to worry about unlocking things as I came to them. But the problem was, was unlike something like dark souls, I really didn't have anything to buy. So I was like up to almost 3000 geo. Please don't and tell me you lost your No, video. I didn't. Somehow I didn't lose it. But okay. I mean, like every single time I would die, there were times I would just have to turn off the console or or turn off the game, uh, not the console because this is my computer. Why are you turning the game off, bro? Because I'd have to walk around <laughs> away from the fact that I was so... It would get you heated I just, up. I, yeah, I didn't want to think about the process of going through that again and the stress that you go through with it. And um, it's very easy in this game, I'll tell people now, like to miss certain things uh as far as vendors naturally um where you're not thinking about it is highly encouraged and i made sure to do this randomly at one point uh to go back and continuously explore to see if you did miss things uh because once i did that i got past to the point i was like oh, okay i got my my geo back and then boom let me go spend all this and i had all these new vendors and i got rid of it and it was like down to like three or four hundred geo and i was like I can live with that. You know, I can live with not having three or 400 geo because I'll go for, I'll grind if I need to, to get, you know, the bare minimum amount again. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. You know, I think that's going to be a turnoff for people, but I do like it for the most part because it does make things feel like they matter. Right. Yeah. I was going to say a lot of these games and think about any genre that you play a lot of the times, if you die or, something bad happens there's really no repercussion exactly and and it's a or he really cool, doesn't have it it's yeah or he's like doop, 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 oh damn you, you died yeah. for the 50th time sorry um but yeah that's that's a really unique twist that would <laughs> it would stress me out like no joke it does definitely stress you out <laughs> at times um but you know if i had to put another knock on the game um there's also so you're calling that a knock yeah. That's a knock? Yeah, well, I didn't mind it. Like I said, my problem was more so that Dark Souls, you bank your souls and things like that, right? Mm-hmm. And yes, if you die, you have to get back to it to get yeah. it back. But the thing is, is that souls are used for leveling. <clears throat> so you consistently, early on, have an incentive to spend your souls. Like, as soon as I, I get you. enough to bank it, I'm spending it. Yeah. Here, I felt like... There was nothing to... Yeah, yeah. I was just banking it, and it's like... So, so let you, me ask you then, why be stressed if there's nothing that you knew that you needed to buy? Because I knew there would be. I at was some like, there's, point. I, I was... I could look at my inventory, and I saw all these charms that were... Missing. There were slots. Yeah. I was like, I well, you. obviously, they're going to appear at some point. That's going to cost you. So, you know, I need this. And I'm like, this is five hours worth of grinding... That would just go away if what, I lost it. Is it GTA uh, 5 online that when you die, you're really close to your, your money? 
Yeah, I think so. They, they spawn you pretty close to your money, so you can just yeah, kind of really try go. to get back. Yeah, so you don't lose everything. <laughs> ah, GTA Online, oh, um, I love it. But the other knock I would put on the game is um, fast travel is a little bit of a hassle in this game. Oh, so um, your inner John is reaching out. <laughs> not in the sense of that, like <laughs> you don't have a really easy, distinct world map to look at. You can look at maps of the regions, and they can kind of guide you to like what. You know, if you go out this way, it's going to lead you to this region is what they tell you. Um, but whereas um, in something like Dark Souls, you can travel. There are things called bonfires, right? That's your save points. And if you're at a bonfire, you can fast travel to other bonfires you've been. So you can pretty much get to where you need to be, including back to the hub world uh, in Dark Souls 3 where all your upgrades would be done. Here you don't have that ne- that necessarily like basically you save at benches but then there are certain benches that are by these things called stagways that you unlock in the game that's kind of the the fast travel which is like these big bugs that go through these big holes that they've carved throughout the world and you're on a little uh like saddle. a little saddle yeah just <laughs> just, just chilling as, as you go through <laughs> and that will take you back to certain other stagways that are close to where you need to be including the main hub world yeah well i had like one part where i was like okay i need to go upgrade this i'm here the closest i don't have a stagway anywhere near me so i've got to figure out okay this region i think if i come out here will bring me here and there's i know i've got one this region that I could go up to here. So I've got to figure out which is the easier path to go through. Um, then after I get to the region there, then it's assessing, okay, where the heck is the stagway at again in this level? And then getting to there. And by the time you do this, it will take you 10 to 15 minutes just to fast travel. Uh, maybe not 10, 15, but five minutes. But it's still in game time. That's a long time. And in yeah. all this period, you could die. You know, and and then have to restart again and then be worried about getting your geo back. Yeah. So it, it's it's kind of an inconvenience, I would say, because it, I would have preferred to just like, and I don't know, maybe at the last part here, I'll be able to just fast travel from benches. I don't think that's the case, though, from what I've gathered. Um, it's a little bit infuriating. But besides that, when you just get down to the core gameplay mechanics and everything going on here, this game rules and you can you know it does that good thing that a castlevania does where you are looking in your surroundings and you see something and you go oh i can't get to that right but you can tell there's something whether it be a wall you can maybe latch on to or you know uh something you can smash to and you go i obviously just don't have the ability yet i need to come back here and that's the number one drive of Metroidvania is to give you yeah. good reasons to revisit where and, you've been. And I always have the initial gumption to want to Old come back, gumption. but I never go back. We got to go back. Well, I don't because once we get further in the game, I either one, forget about it or two, beat the game. And it's like, I'm not going back. True. The, the most recent game that we've done that on mm-hmm. was, was God of War. Oh, a and lot of backtracking, a lot game. of backtrack, but it almost was, you, you almost wanted to. It was very weird how they did that. Yeah, they gave you incentive. Yeah. Really good incentive. So, I don't know. Um, here, you know, there's not going to be a person, remember that time you were here? You should go <laughs> back. No, you just either go back or you keep going forward and you miss out on things. Right. Um, it's definitely a game I would tell people, I'm like, if you like this genre, if you like exploration, and if you like the kind of like dark golf tones and things like that, you know, more... Uh, if you listen to a lot of Smashing Pumpkins and you were a loner in high school uh, in the 90s, That's you, funny. You, might, you might find yourself at home in this game. <laughs> uh, I've enjoyed it. I, like I said, the, the abilities don't feel like anything too original here. Like Ori, to me, does a lot of cool original things. Like even looking at the new one, right, where I'm like, wait a minute, so I'm going to burrow through the sand and then I can propel out on the other side and it's going to shoot me out and I go do these crazy things. But it does feel like everything here plays together nicely. And um, as you gain more abilities and move on, even though the difficulty begins to ramp up more, you also definitely feel like you can deal with a lot more. Um, the first couple right. of hours, like the first two bosses are hard, 
not mainly because they're difficult in terms of um, the movements or anything, right? They're they're hard because you're just so limited in what you can do in the game. Um, you know, you only have like a jump, and I think early on, like as I said, you start out with just the jump and the sword, and like the first enemy. If you don't have perfect timing and, and understanding of how he works, he's going to wreck you the first couple of times. You kind of just have to learn how he works and how your movements work. Um, if you were to come back later in the game or try it again, there's there's a couple of ways you can do that. And you have all these other abilities. He's he's easy to work. Yeah. Like you would just have no problem with it because once you start getting things like the dash ability, um, the ground pound, the double jump. When I got double jump, that was the game changer because now it's like, old, oh, thank you, God. The old ground pound. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it, you start to feel like, as you should, a lot more of a true powerful hero. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's cool is there's a lot of hidden lore within the world and it's worth exploring. Um, you start to get a lot of context and as you find things, you can bring those things to different people and they will tell yeah, you about it. That add a cool little element to everything then mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. And there's a lot of just, uh, I mean, it starts out very simple in terms and you're just like, well, why did this place go fall apart? And then as you start to get and into you it, learn. you're like, Oh, there's That's a lot. Why. Yeah. There's a lot going on here and there's a lot of depth to it. Yeah. Uh, it's not something I want to spoil at all. So I would just say if you like stuff like that, that are slow revealing and maybe, yeah, you don't get every single detail what went on in this world, but you have a good understanding of it. Yeah. It's so cool to see where it leads to. Um, well, that's cool. Like you say, you start off as an unnamed knight. Yeah. And you're just starting to figure stuff out. <laughs> Pretty much. You're yeah. just like, you're just a voiceless dude. You're a Zelda. Yeah. Or a Link. I'm sorry. Yeah. And like, a little right, dude. And where do we go from here? Everyone else wants to tell me about the world, but I don't say anything. Yeah. Just me chugging along with hey. my little yeah um uh it is out on switch like we said yeah which which is kind of why you got re-excited yeah it's been on steam it has been on steam for a while i think there's some dlc <laughs> i think i read somewhere they do have some more dlc that they're playing to release, release. wonder when uh i'm not sure i know one of them includes the hornet where yeah. you can play as her and she is uh you have to fight her at one point and she She's is no uh joke. she is pretty ba you saw me fighting her that, that was that's, that was yeah, yeah the that was no joke yeah she was uh she wrecked me a good <laughs> little bit there um there are also optional bosses you can go do so Ooh. that oh. that can add a challenge and i know there's various ways to go back and do kind of like harder versions for eventual true ending as they would call it so there's a lot to do here you will definitely i know you said like well, it's only 15 bucks. Well, for 15 bucks, yeah, you're going to get your money's worth in terms of game. That's play. legit. I, I mean, you can't go wrong spending $15 on a game that's giving you 20, 30, 40 hours of content, dude. Exactly. That means you're playing it. That means you're liking it probably. Mm -hmm. As John would say, that could be anecdotal, but I mean, chances are you are liking it if you're playing that much and putting that much time into it. Um, you, you said you wished you could play it more, but you've been at John's. Yeah, so blame John. Yeah, it's all John's fault. He it's would all normally John. be right across I would have beat me, this, but, but he's not. Yeah. Thanks, because John. Because you're where you are and stuff. You know, you could just ask me to go chuck food at your dogs once a day. and No. No. Watch the whole place. Use my terrible internet. Thanks. <laughs> you're such a friend. P.S. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I ate all your cumin. <laughs> Hope you're happy. Literally spooned it. Yep. Um, if you're wondering we right are. now. Where you're at now, yeah. Yeah. I uh, haven't beat it, but at this point, I would say I'm seeing a very solid 8.5 Richards. Ooh. I'm not to the level of Ori. Ori no. is like a 9.5 to me. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that would probably kill it for you then would be if some whack ending happened, right, or something. And I don't think that's going to happen yeah. i have a, i have a very strong feeling this is not going to be a very happy ending to this game from what i've gathered gotcha. uh, as to what the the namesake of what the game is and what the, it's been revealed to me what that means but i yeah Ooh. hearing that and knowing things i'm like this is probably not going to end oh, well this is no. this is like i said <sighs> Smashing Pumpkins, The Cure, they're all playing right now. Oh, no. I'm going to put on my goth makeup and cry in a corner about how the world <laughs> hates me. But everything's so beautiful. Oh, my God. Uh, so if you got a Switch, you need a poop game. You could poop to this game. If, this, if all you did was play this game <laughs> when you pooped, I think it would take you a year. 
I want to see someone do that too. A year long yeah, poop game. I was thinking game. like, how's that math going to play out? And you're like, a year. One year One of year. pooping. <laughs> so you think people poop on average for 30 hours a year? Well, I mean, like, I'm more so thinking, okay, so. Because sometimes I poop for, like, 20, 30 minutes. Okay, so, like, say the average person when they poop. Uh-huh. Not like Ken. This is who, tough, though. Not like our former boss, Ken. Yeah. Who literally, because he was in the Army, will just go and drop trout, and boom, it's done in it's five done. seconds. I don't know how he did it. I was like, yeah. you are 50, sir. <laughs> how did you do up. that? <laughs> Your colon does not work this way anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, like, for us, yeah, like, I think of a person... If you think the average person poops once a day, mm-hmm. 10 minutes a day, okay, that's well, that's 70 minutes a week, right? Yeah. So that's Times an hour, hour and 10 minutes a week that you're doing. I mean, that would get you there, right? Well, in less than a year. Yeah, less than a year even, yeah. But let's say you don't poop every day. Or yeah, you want to yeah. be a purist, or you don't always have your switch with you when you exactly. Poop. Yeah, so the, the math is the math is okay. It yeah. works. That could be a game you have for a year. Poop math dedicated to pooping. And How then great is that? And then if you want one for your next five years, you buy Skyrim on Switch. <laughs> <laughs> oh just, my god! Today, uh, from the toilet, you're like, "Honey, <laughs> I made it to the Thieves Guild. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in this dwarf dungeon for the last three months. <laughs> I think I'm a vampire too. I'm not sure." I heal that. <laughs> yeah, they I don't know if I healed it. I, my character might still be a vampire. Eventually, you can't do anything unless you do some really, really hard stuff. Yeah? Yeah, if you don't cure it after a number of days, you, you become a vampire. <laughs> well, wherever my character is right now, he's definitely a vampire. That's hard to cure and also the werewolf one. <laughs> but you get that just by doing the Adventures Guild. Oh. Unless you're a bee. I don't remember. To the itch. Um, B to the itch. Uh, you want to go to the topic, or I'm sorry, to yeah, the news. Sure, Chris, let's move on and go to the topic. <laughs> Hollow Night, <laughs> topic of the week. Uh, let's do some news. All right, okay, I'm down. All right, hot off the press and straight to your ears. Weekly Games Chat presents the news. <laughs> news. See, Mike. Or, John, we, we move away from the mic when we do that. Yeah. See how we did that? See how we Lean did that? Lean back? Yeah. I mean, it's called Mike Etiquette. He's dumb. He is. You know, I'm, I'm a little nervous right now. Why? Because I wrote these, so I can't blame yeah, yeah. John. You should have said, them. like, hey, hey, write these for me. Yeah. Like, just copy them. So just, then you just, yeah, said, yeah. I'll, I'll write this out. But then if you could just type it up for me real quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, Todd Howard swipes at Sony. Yeah. But that's this Todd Howard has stated in an interview with a German publication that Fallout 76 will not feature crossplay, and that's mainly due to Sony. Quote, you cannot do crossplay in 76. There's one. Yeah, no, I changed one. <laughs> uh, we'd really love that, but right now we can't. Sony is not as helpful as everyone would Ooh. like. Ooh. This is not the first time Howard has been critical to Sony. When Fallout 4 and Skyrim Special Edition released, mod support was not allowed by Sony for months. Yeah. Mainly because they had issues, I believe, with like the copyright stuff. They were afraid yeah. people were going to make the things. I was going to, I was going to bring that up. He has no problem ever taking a jab at Sony. No. I mean, he's, he uh, understands. He's like, he's that guy like who's Kojima or Miyamoto. Yeah. He can say wherever he wants. Yeah. He is, he has a job as long as he wants. P. Hines of Bethesda, he will gladly drop to his knees if need be <laughs> to be like, please don't go to EA. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I don't know. We don't. I don't know enough about the game to to know if that would matter. But I, I and part of me thinks that it's cro- online. It's online. So at any point you can promote crossplay. It's going to bring more people together, which is what you want in a game that's an online game. Exactly. So I think I wouldn't be surprised if it would be needed, just because I think he said the most that any map was ever going to have was like thirty two people at one time. It's just still so you know, yeah, it's it's a lot, but it's like not. Dude, there's only like what four nukes. <laughs> I think they said it was like six nukes. Oh my god, there's two more nukes. <laughs> <laughs> but um I mean, it's just we keep seeing this and I I even if they never had intention to do crossplay, I guarantee you Todd Howard had no problem saying this just because he hates it. Like and yeah. everyone hates it. It's like imagine you had an Android phone and I had an iPhone. In a world. Right? And I can't text you because you have an Android phone. Right. That, that is different. It's dumb. But it's different. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> because one's built on my 
monetization, but like I can understand why he doesn't want to do this because even if they could, because imagine with them Bethesda accounts, right? If they eventually do have mod support, the way it usually works is you log into your Bethesda account, you go into the mod store, you pick the ones you want to download and you download all that. Well, if you can't, if they're going to do the things that like Fortnite did, right? And you can't link your Bethesda account because you can't use one that was used on a Sony server, right? That's going to suck. Uh, yeah, it's going to cause tons of issues again. People yeah. are going to hate it. Um, but I don't know. They need to they need to tighten up there at Sony and just realize that well, if I mean, they're not careful, it's going to be like they're going to be the new EA of loot boxes, right? <laughs> Someone's got to take the fall. Well, it's going to be Sony. And I, I, I was thinking like why. The only thing they've really said back, like in a public statement regarding the crossplay thing, yeah, it was it Sean was Lane. it was not it it d- didn't feel like they were even trying to be compassionate mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. it at all. It's like they were tone deaf to the entire issue. So yeah, I keep saying this, and I mean it. Like obviously, when it comes to online presence, uh, Ooh, Phil I like, Spencer, I like presence. Yeah, though. Phil Spencer yeah. obviously has a much higher presence in, in Xbox for that matter. Uh, much more established, well more trusted than Nintendo. We're all sitting here going, "What the hell is going to happen?" With yeah, that, right. I'm if still, I'm yeah, if I'm Reggie, I, I keep saying this. I'm calling him right now and, and say, "I have no problem if we come out in a joint partnership tomorrow and say if there is a game on both of our systems, neither of us is going to do anything to block the idea that they can't do crossplay. We'll leave it up to the developers if they actually want to do it or if they can do it." But we are not going to get in their way. So we will never have an issue with this. And we're going to make it the same with the PC, too. If they did that, I mean, that's just like, yeah, that's, gonna that's put, a knockout. That's a knockout. It's going to put some a real squeeze on Sony's stance. So, yeah. Well, until that happens, who knows? I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I love that. I actually love that Todd Howard, uh, that we have Todd Howard of the world who can say things like that. Yeah. And, and. He has enough respect in the industry to where Sony, some Sean Layden, hell, he might be in, in his office going, man, I really wish Todd wouldn't have said that or text him. Todd, why'd you have to say that? You're a D, Todd. <laughs> You're being a Todd's D right like, now. I look like MacGyver at Bethesda's press conference. I can say and do what I want. Did you see my members only jacket? <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> uh, Halo series. I'm excited, Chris. This is, this is hype. Coming to Showtime. Showtime and Microsoft have announced a live action Halo series will be coming to the channel. The show will run for 10 episodes in season one, uh, with each episode running about an hour. Quote, Halo is our most ambitious series ever, and we expect audiences who have been anticipating it for years to be thoroughly rewarded, said Showtime president and CEO David Nevins. This vision of Halo will enthrall fans of the game while also drawing the uninitiated into a world of complex characters that populate this unique universe. I am I am really excited for this. There's a lot they could do with this. Yes. I mean, you could do Reach. Yeah. You could do you could just do something with like the soldiers when they're first on Halo. Yeah. You know, and just showing the hardship there and then yeah. like every now and then Master Chief just shows up wrecking fools. I mean, the co- the covenant the, we're in we're in a place to where if you put as far as like technology goes where if these people decide to develop this show and spend money on it and do it right yeah it can be as good as you know like a game of thrones well you see it now like uh not even like this i understand why they finally bit and i'm sure they probably the reason this is happening now as opposed to earlier is i'm sure showtime is willing to spend more because they're looking as you said like Game of Thrones, everyone sees what the success of that has been. Yeah. But on the other side of it, you have Amazon, who is now ponying up, like, what was it? It was like a billion dollars yeah. they expect to spend lifetime on the Lord of the Rings series. Yeah. And then on the other side of the coin, you have Netflix, who's ponying up and spending hundreds of millions of dollars, apparently, in, in hopes of making the Witcher series big. So oh, everyone, so good. Everyone sees like, hey, you know, these things that nerds like, you know, like the, other the people game. like too. Yeah, when we put them out there and we give them production <laughs> values, everyone loves them. Yeah, I, I, I can't wait. I know when you when you talked about, we were on the phone today, and you talked about the two biggest pieces of news. Uh, the Todd Howard thing, of course, is big from a sure. industrial standpoint or whatever. And, and but this one made me more excited than anything. I couldn't wait to talk about it. I hope that the people get excited about it, and I hope that it's good. Because it definitely has potential to be. I can't wait. I just want to see elites do battle. 
<laughs> of live action elite. Right. Do some right. Or just, God, some of those huge, uh, creations that they have in there. The huge, like, troll monster things. It'd oh be funny God. if the warthogs were very hard to drive for, like, a noob who got in it. Like, like they get in and there's no wheel. There's just two joysticks and you're like, Oh, come on, man. <laughs> That'd be so awesome. <laughs> um, a new challenger. What? Reports state that Google is developing an online gaming, uh, online game streaming service codenamed Yeti and has further plans to release a dedicated gaming console. This is crazy. The service is expected to be similar to the NVIDIA GeForce, which allows players to play modern games on low end devices. According to Kotaku, Google intends to fulfill three goals in the gaming segment. Uh, introduce a new streaming platform, develop a dedicated gaming console, and rake in game developers to further its ambition of <laughs> infiltrating the gaming market. I, I feel like that's almost any... First of all, this is crazy. Google has money. Yeah, and if Google do. wants to do this, they're probably going to do it and not hold back. Uh, but those last three, I feel like those are three of the pillars for every people, like every person or company that makes any kind of gaming device. Sure. <laughs> I mean, it, it's interesting because, yeah, like, obviously this is going to, the first thing that's coming out sounds like it's going to go to war a little bit with Steam Link. And yeah. um, I guess what Sony does with the... uh PlayStation Now stuff mm -hmm. where you can stream the stuff. I know Microsoft is supposed to be working on it, but they're kind of like maybe they're not now because Phil got some info. <sighs> they have they have stuff. I think like Google. His, his whole entire thing is that where he said I, I was watching him on uh, Giant Bombs uh, thing that they did for they do like an interview with him pretty much every three now, and he was saying his big concern about it. Is the idea of like, okay, say if you're playing PUBG, right, on this, you're streaming it to your PC on this really high-end PC somewhere else in the world, how much data does that take? And how much is your data cap with your provider? And how much is that going to run up on you in a month? You know, like that's his yeah. big thing right now. But I still could see it making sense for a lot of other things like the smaller games and all that. I don't know. Well, hey, I don't know. In a, in a world where the Nintendo Switch world. came out of nowhere and we, we kind of had our concerns about it, people are loving it. Developers are coming to it a little bit. People are still buying them because you can take this thing anywhere. Uh, the one thing that Nintendo is missing, though, is is streaming stuff. Yeah. Uh, so what if a Google comes what through and, and they ball out? I don't know. It, I, I you, you can't go against Google because they're Google. Exactly. They're they're. You know, just like when Microsoft got into this, I yeah, think people wanted to downplay thinking of. it. And you just go like, that's a company that understands tech that yeah. has billions upon billions upon billions of dollars to spend. And it's like, oh, we're going to put $10 billion towards our new gaming division. They're like, okay. It doesn't matter to them. <laughs> I don't remember the details, but I remember a friend of the show, Mike Slade, telling me that Microsoft was making a new console. And it meant yes, there. It meant that, no, no, no. Oh. It meant the death of the Dreamcast because we had gotten or I'd gotten a Dreamcast and loved it, but that was the the death of it. And yeah. I it, shortly after the Xbox came out and that was game over. There were a lot of things that unfortunately killed that console because it was a fun console. It was a good. Yeah. Um, But who knows? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see, dude. This is crazy. I'm interested to see uh, where this goes, because just the idea of launching a new console like out of nowhere almost. Yeah. I mean, it's been. 20 years almost now since we've had that a new contender if you will um you know what else i love hmm. code names Ooh, yeti yeah i love it's code names like of projects cooler. they're always <laughs> <laughs> or a cup yeah. like one of those cups it's like is that console a cup a cooler huh. what is it uh overwatch's newest hero is a hamster <laughs> Blizzard has revealed its 28th hero from the for the world of Overwatch. That new hero is Wrecking Ball, a mech that is piloted by Hammond, who is a hamster. <laughs> <laughs> the little guy is from the Horizon Lunar Colony, like Winston, and is a tank class. His ball comes outfitted with twin Gatlin guns and can latch on the various platforms to propel his ball at great speeds and heights. Like, I saw... Um, this okay, is crazy. There was, I was watching gameplay of it and okay. So was the one, 
there's the one Overwatch map where you're you're es- escorting the payload through like a canyon, right? Mm-hmm. And there's like a big ridge over the top, and like you can get up there um, through various back channels. This guy like rolls the ball up, <laughs> latches on to uh, where he's in between where the ridge is, you know, the archway there, and he just starts looping around and gaining speed. He's like does probably 10 loops around the ridge and finally <laughs> lets go. And that thing just pl- like plows into five people, killing them instantly. And I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. Uh, I want to, I haven't picked up Overwatch in a in while. a minute, but this makes you almost want to. But yeah, because one, I love tanks. And, and two, this just, the idea of there being a little ham, you know, hamster that murders people while chuckling <laughs> with his little hamster cheeks. I can't believe there's 28 heroes now. Right? Like, when did this happen? Dude, they, they know where the money is. I know what I'm saying. It's, it's happened. We've reported on some of them. It just, that's 28 people now. If you bought that game today, one, you'd get wrecked. Yeah. Two, you'd have a lot of characters to pick from. Which is crazy. And you think like, well, where's, what, that game is just now out for two years. Yeah. Where's that game in like five years? Right. Like 40 heroes, 50 heroes. They know what they're doing. They do. Blizzard knows what they're doing, dude. They do. They just print money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, PlayStation Plus games for this month. Heavy Rain, Absolver, Rayman 3 HD, Deception 4, The Nightmare Princess's Last Tour PS3. Uh, and on the other side, if you got games with gold, you can get Assault Android Cactus, which what? I had never heard of, but <laughs> apparently... Is it's it sitting legit? at like 84% on Metacritic. Really? So I was like, maybe I need to go see this. With the worst title ever. Right? Uh, Death Squared, Virtual Fighter 5, and Splinter Cell Conviction. Those are both, uh, Xbox 360 games. They're, of course, backwards compatible. Folks, if you like your Splinter Cell, Conviction's a pretty solid one. So, uh, maybe I will grab that when it's there and, and take a trip down memory lane. The whole and memory lane. Cry a little bit. I but, think I might want to get Heavy Rain and actually play it again. It is worth playing through. Um, I wonder what it, uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, that one's a little hard now, I think, just because they're all French people trying to be American. <laughs> right. And it's really weird to hear someone go, Jason, Jason, <laughs> where are you? <laughs> uh, best French impersonation ever, Chris. Good job. Yes. <laughs> uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe patched with Labo support. This is crazy. Racers in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe can now use their motorcycle handlebars from Nintendo Labo to drive in the game. Simply download the update and you'll be turning corners faster than ever. I, Keep them short and pithy. I know you do. I, this Labo thing, I, I, I'm telling you, this is completely, this can't be scientifically proven, but when I go to the stores that I go to, um, I know where the Labo stuff is. Yes. And it does look like inventory is getting cycled through, like people are buying this stuff. Well, that's good. Uh, and it's crazy to think, I don't know why, that Nintendo doesn't have a plan to implement it to other games. But I did not know this was eventually going to happen, to where it, you could you could get a motorcycle handlebar from the Labo and use it with your Mario Kart. I have to say, eight. like, it probably, too, if we're being honest, didn't take much. Right. Because, right. you know... You've got the game already built, and yeah. you're using Joy Cons already. So, right. like you know, I wouldn't imagine it would be too much of you know everything. Of obviously, is designed to work within the Switch software, and seeing as they're the first party company, it wouldn't be that hard of a reach. But it is a cool thing. It's like here's one more reason to have a Labo. You know, if you're if you're interested in that stuff. The most important news of the week here. Well. Um, First of all, before we move on, uh huh. That this previous thing we talked about may may make us have to get together, get the crew back together. Uh oh. But I don't have a switch. Yeah, we're gonna need you to get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, I think but, about it. Every now and then I do think about it and then I but go, if I'm being uh, real, what yeah. you're about to talk about is probably gonna keep you away from playing Mario. Kart. Exactly. <laughs> uh even though I won't get this version because I've already got the deluxe one pre ordered with uh Braun Braun on the cover. Uh, NBA 2K19 has its cover athlete, the Greek freak and newly crowned greatest player of the Eastern Conference. Thanks, LeBron. Um, Giannis and to I don't know how you say the last when name. When the announcers say it, it sounds so smooth. It really does. And I thought about practicing it earlier. And I was like, well, that's not fair. <laughs> I don't it's practice. Not. I don't practice all the Japanese I, names. Out of all the stuff I give you with words, I don't know how to say it either. Yeah. Do you want I, me to go I on do, record and try it with you? Go for it. Uh, Giannis 
Antetokounmpo. I feel like you're kind of in the ballpark. Uh, but the uh, star player from Milwaukee Bucks, let's just go with yeah, that. Yeah, he's legit. <laughs> will grace the cover of this year's standard edition of NBA 2K19 with the slogan of, they will know your name. Which is hilarious. Especially with him, yes. <laughs> uh, he said, quote, I am honored to be the first international player featured on the cover of NBA 2K19. I love playing NBA 2K. <laughs> So this will mean, so this means a lot to me. I have worked hard to earn recognition in the NBA and being on the cover of NBA 2K19 is a dream come true. P.S. I plan to go to the Lakers with LeBron when my contract is up. Can you imagine? If those two got together? Dude, it's over. Oh my God. Yeah. Hey, the Lakers did get Rondo. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the picture that someone put up with yeah. uh, where he's like, LeBron sucks my, <laughs> yeah. like, and he's just like, yep. Yep. Uh, you gotta love the NBA. Uh, it's good I, stuff. yeah. Awesome for him. Um, it's surprising that I haven't heard more about the game itself yet because they're releasing it a little bit earlier this year. But because, what do they need to of change, course, really? there's a, I don't know if you know, Sean, there's a game coming out on October 26th. <laughs> uh, haven't heard. What's it's it? from this little upstart company called Rockstar. <laughs> it's a little upstart. And apparently everyone's frightened of it. Oh. So they're moving everything up. Uh, but, okay. uh, it yeah, sense. it's coming out like, September 4th this year, which is a little bit early. Usually it's like the first week of October. Um, but we haven't heard anything. I know I'm going to get it. Yeah. I know I'm going to play it for 5,000 hours. Yeah. Cause I do it every year. Yeah. You know, have to. Uh, and this one kind of sucks, but I'm not surprised. This one more than sucks. What are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, Henning leaves EA and hints at a Star Wars games cancellation. Amy Henning has left EA to form her own small studio. In talking with Eurogamer, Henning stated, quote, I'm not doing anything Star Wars, and who knows what the future may hold, but the project is on the shelf now. The Vancouver studio is working on something pretty different. It's really not dot, dot, dot. You know, once you go more open world, it's such a different game to the one we were making. Everyone loved what we were doing, and I'd love to see us resurrect that somehow, but it's complicated. EA afterwards released a statement saying, I guess I cut off part of this quote, but <laughs> Amy Henning has moved on from Electronic Arts. Amy is an amazing storyteller, a crafter, a creator. We have so much respect for her and the creative spirit she brought to the teams and the projects she worked on at EA. We wish Amy all the best with what comes next, and we will be watching with excitement. I think I was like reading. She doesn't want to have more than like 15 or 16 people, she said, like at her new studio. So and it's going to be focused on single player game experiences. So the guy at E3, yeah, who had the hat on, that's different. Okay, so for some people who who may not know, explain why he's different than what Amy Hennig was doing. So when EA first got the Star Wars license, right? Mm -hmm. Amy Hennig shortly after had left um, Nine Dog, and she went over to uh, to EA, and the idea was you had. Dice that was going to work on Battlefront. That was the first thing they were going to work on. Of course, they've put two of those out now. But the other idea was that she was going to go form a new studio uh, out of a couple of the remnants of, of like Visceral and other things that would be in Vancouver. Uh, and their whole entire thing was to create a single player Star Wars game. Like, you know, new original story not tied oh, to anything. Right. Then. Afterwards, when Respawn, uh, when EA decided to ruin Titanfall by putting in the <laughs> middle of hell, uh, they decided that they should go do a Star Wars game. So they've been building something and to a point where Vince, what's his face, can go talk about it, but not actually show anything. Right. But it's coming next fall, apparently. Um, and at the same time, around that time, they announced that they were going to be canceling Amy's game. And instead redesigning it to be what was more of an open world, uh, online kind of, hey, you can keep coming back here and giving us money, I think might be the underlying tone, honestly, <laughs> um, game. And Amy, I don't think is a big fan of doing that because if you, you know, Uncharted has always had on online multiplayer, but I don't think she's really had much involvement of that. That's something that the other side of Naughty Dogs have done. Her focus has always been the core 
Nathan Drake experience, you know, the 14, 15 hours that you're putting in that. So, so yeah, I'm not I, too surprised you left. Me neither. Because, I mean, you think about it, Amy's going to want to create, a, like you said, a single story with a character that that's kind of new and you're going to follow that journey. Exactly. And they come to her and say, like, no, nah, we ain't feeling that. Let's do something else. We want money from people. We're going to do this and this. And she's like, eh, but that's really not me. I mean, you can yeah. see this coming, like I said. Uh, the good news out of all this is just because this is shelved, doesn't mean we're not getting a Star Wars that could be good or bad, depending on like Chris. This said. just in: Respawn has shelved their game too. <laughs> that uh, would be terrible. They're all going back to Call of Duty, so we'll see. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, I, it's just sad because John you loves Amy Henning, though. Yeah, it, it's sad because <laughs> it's kind of like this thing we've seen these great names of single player games who, for whatever reason, they've had to at least leave the safety net of having studios that could help make triple a titles for them. Like there's a lot less of those, unless you're willing to go really the big one would be Pete Hines. Um, he seems to be at Bethesda be yeah. the one guy who's really banking on this more than anyone else. I guess he and rockstar does too, to an experience, but their single player experiences are vastly different from what these people are trying to do. But you know, you look at Amy and then also Ken Levine um, and a couple of others and it's sad because now they're still making games, but they're making things that are much smaller experience. And that obviously puts a limitation as to what they can do. And I think what made those two especially so interesting was that not only could they make things that were gameplay wise, new and challenging, but they could also, because of the budget, make something that was a huge spectacle. And uh, that's something that's fun. You know, I like that. You shouldn't just get that in online games. I agree. Hundred percent. I mean, but look, think about it. If if anything showed us recently that single player games can exist, mm -hmm. God of War sure enough did. Yeah, they did. So, take that, take everyone. that. <laughs> By the way, God of War Online releasing the <laughs> <laughs> Corey Balrog box tracks. <laughs> Apparently, too, uh, in our in our little kick chat that we have, mm -hmm. they were talking about there's a, there's something that no one's gotten in God of War yet. Yeah, it's like some sort of hidden thing. That like, that. They're like, no one's got it. And you're I like, do know you can get the uh, the equivalent of the Infinity Gauntlet in there, apparently. Yeah. I did learn that after the fact. I didn't even know it while I was That's playing. It's crazy. It is. Like, just the level of creativity that they put in those things. They're amazing. Uh, finally Tat this week. Match. Wait, wait, what? Finally this, this week. This is not finally. Yeah, that's the finally. This is not finally. What else do you want? Is this finally? Yeah. We're uh, uh, <laughs> finally this week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fortnite hosts what may be the best online gaming event ever. Ever. Yeah, it was. It, it was, was the greatest ever. It was ever. pretty dope. I, I, didn't, I missed it, it but huge. I heard about it. I went back and watched everything uh, yeah. because I sure as heck wasn't going to try to log on with uh, John's crappy internet. <laughs> so funny. The whole show just beat up his stupid internet. Yeah. Come on, John. Don't give me this excuse. Well, he he basically told us, right? Yeah. That he lives in a pocket of the world. Where no one will give him internet. John lives in the Sudan. <laughs> it's like he lives in the one spot in the city where they they don't know who to give it. It's like when you order pizza mm -hmm. and they're like, no, I think that store has to deliver to you. And then you call that store and they're like, no, I think the other store does. I I can't believe that that's the case. It's I don't crazy. think it is too because I feel like my mom has switched like providers at least three or four times in times that like we – since she's lived in her house. Yeah. Which was like 2000. So – if she was able to switch around between different providers, why can't he? I don't know. It's kind of the weird thing, right? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he just does live in a black hole. Who knows? <laughs> uh, this past, regardless of this past Saturday, Fortnite players gathered online at 1030 a.m. Pacific time to watch the launch of the rocket that's been seen in the evil lair near snobby shores. <laughs> As the rocket launched into the sky, pieces fell to various parts of the map as it picked up speed. And then that sucker hit 88 miles per hour, and we saw some serious... Sh oh, we're a family <laughs> podcast. We can't say that. Uh, soon after launch, the rocket started disappearing and reappearing through cracks in space and possibly time since the launch. These cracks have started to expand and eat at the world, a lot of people. Uh, this is the cool thing that Epic is doing. Yes. And, like, people are always trying to do this bow between PUBG in Epic, right? You know, and, and Fortnite. And I would say, like, they're two very, very different things. And this is evidence of why. Like, they're similar to a degree. Yeah. 
but they're very different. PUBG had a cool, interesting idea, and they do a lot of cool gameplay to make it better, and they're trying to, you know, get good. Epic is a world-class studio. People seem to forget Epic made Gears of War, and there's a reason why, you know, Microsoft paid them a lot of money for that, right? Yeah. Um, and this is what happens when you have a world-class studio who understands how things work and how to keep people entertained, much like Blizzard does, right? They they are, like, to me, for real, like a Blizzard Junior, almost. So, so you know, you start out. And at first yeah. it was just, here's a game to play that is a battle royale. Which was then free. It, yeah. Then it was like, okay, here's a season, like taking something that's in Diablo and works great for them. Here it is. You have an excuse to keep playing this because you can level up. And we'll also put out skins for you to buy whenever, just randomly uh, during events. Then to like, you know, now where it's like, okay, whenever a season ends, we're going to do some kind of world event that completely changes it up and teases what's coming next. And and then not even that, dude. They add literally like challenges and all sorts no, of crazy stuff. Thanos, yeah, they had Thanos. <laughs> they you brought like be Thanos, Thanos in the game, and they they're not afraid to do stuff like that, which is yeah. I mean, like not so every cool. not every time event that they do has been a winner. I think like there's some I've looked at them like like the whole entire fifty on fifty thing. I was like, eh. and it didn't work. Yeah. But a lot of these other ones, like the idea of the playground one, where people could just go around and like you know they were smart to realize oh there's a bunch of people that if they have the social point they just want to go play soccer on the field or or shoot the basketball or whatever, and that's cool. Like there's nothing wrong with that. Like or one v one me, bro. Exactly. Yeah. Um. But then, like, like I said, to add the, like, uh, the little challenges in there now, like the weekly things that you have to figure out, all that just keeps players, like, you know, depth, yeah. while not some of our friends and, you know, us, we've kind of moved on, I would say we might go back every once in a blue moon. There's a core of our friends that have been playing this, this is their thing game. Yeah. literally at least since January. You know, sure, Mike Slade and, and Mike D have been playing this probably since October of last year. Um, yeah, that's about when, yeah, we all download us three downloaded it. They kept playing. I, I played it for like two days. I think I came and in and like, stopped. I think I came in like mid November, mm-hmm. earlier December and I played maybe to March, but like then the majority of the people it felt like came in about January, like when they really started to crank out the, the stuff whole crew. And yeah, like I said, they have been playing this nonstop for seven months and that's impressive to me. That says a lot. Impressive. That doesn't happen. Very impressive. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I suggest if you haven't seen it, um, go watch there it. are tons of videos with different perspectives and just watching that rocket, like go in and out of space and time and then reappear. I, I need to watch it. I was going to say too, if you guys wanted to, uh, whatever v- various form of social media, if you've got some cool clips yeah. from your experiences on Fortnite, or if you were on that night and saw something, hit us up, tag us in it. See Chris, or I'm oh, sorry, see John tagging us in it means. That's funny. <laughs> Don't ever associate me with not knowing what that is. Uh, you want to wrap this up? Uh, never. Okay. If you want to write your thoughts in to Weekly Games Chat and have your opinions and ramblings read on the air, you can write them to weeklygameschat at gmail.com. Yeah, we'll still we'll still read them. We, we want to hear from you. I'll try to decipher it. Yeah, he'll, he'll try his best. I, I would appreciate you not put racist things in there um, <laughs> and that you attack John consistently. It's the greatest thing ever. Especially about his internet. <laughs> but yes, weeklygameschat at gmail.com. Just like... Ever did, because his Twitter handle is Ever Alonzo, so he said Ever, ever Lozano. I'm going like Le- Lozano or Lovano. It's it's right there. It says his name is Lavar Ball. <laughs> <laughs> Lavar Ball says uh, that's so funny. <laughs> or Lonzo Ball. That's why I but was he's thinking. Like, you know of, to call him. You said you can you can call him Ever. Just okay, all right, Ever. Uh, John, he's probably not there, but I have to say this. Don't let these guys get you down. I appreciate your sheets of notes and your game reviews. And while you might not be as handsome, smart, and or popular as Sean and Chris, at least you're there. 
That's nice. That really we appreciate that. That ever. really made me feel that's good. like plus ten points to that listener. I don't know. I didn't really think this through and ran out of things to say. <laughs> so, anyways, here are some ideas for oh, future shows. We, Remember a couple of weeks ago, yeah. I teased this up. I said, "Hey," and I you, still you it's still it. there. You fully said it because yeah. we I unless something changed, I don't think we have anything planned for next week. We, we've got to figure this out. There's going to be a. A melding of the Crash minds. Bandicoot on Switch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be hilarious. We could do it. Um, anyways, he That's says, so funny. <laughs> if everyone is on vacation, I would love another music slash sound track podcast. Yeah. Well, we're here ever. There's only one. One time of the year we do yeah, that. Yeah, we do that. And that's always the last but, episode. But we could have a summer edition. No, because that Shut pulls it away. Down. <laughs> I don't think you understand. <laughs> uh, would He would also would love another Games of the Decade, if only whoa, to show that Witcher whoa, 3. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? You missed half of his oh, thing. Oh, what? You got to read it. He said, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, he said, Trust podcast. okay, I'm sorry. Uh, this last one was my first and I really enjoyed it. So like I said. We he do it. it. It's always the end of the year one. So if you go back in time from when we put it out, probably about 40 to 50 episodes, you should be able to find the, the previous one for, right. for the Christmas music. Yeah. And episode. I think you even say Chris, do you, is it not called the Christmas music spectacular? At this it's point? Some, like the whatever year music spectacular is usually yeah. what it puts out. So, um, but like it's, it, it's always that time period. Though. We do want to keep it to where it's special. Yes. We're not saying that we would never, who knows. But I like how a, you want to keep it like you do all the work on it. We're, we're team Chris. Oh, are you? You know, I'll, that, I'll make sure I call you over this year. Sean, e- we're a team. Enos Cantor got a ring. <laughs> okay. That's funny. It was, did he really win the championship? Did he really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Javel McGee got a ring. Okay. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, right, he also says he would love another games of the decade if only to show that Witcher 3 doesn't belong at number one above Breath of the Wild above all other games. You shut your mouth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Witcher 3 game of no, the decade. No, he says it does belong. Oh, it does. Oh, at the number one well, above Breath of the Wild. Here's above the thing. All we can't games. do that ever because Sean kind of, or John, one of the two, because they didn't have something else at the time, put Witcher 3 on their list at like number three out of respect. And that's what propelled it, it to number one. It won. So I'm afraid if we ever do this again, and I feel like we can't until we get to the next generation because I'm not going to let that go down. Uh, <laughs> this is much, this is very much like when you beat me 30 something times in a row on Madden. Exactly. But I beat you on this the last one. This one time, it, I got it. You know, Chris will never let, not let that game be the number one. Exactly. And it just, it is what it is. But, it needs to be number but one. But hey, that's actually not a bad idea. We may play off that and Maybe. do. Maybe instead of doing, see, our mistake was we brought it together for a cumulative thing, which really doesn't work well when you only have three people, right? Yeah. So unless we all just decide God of War is, is now the game of the decade. <laughs> What's the game so far, I think? But hey, I don't know. we definitely have some ideas sure. uh, with with how we could go about a list of some sort Yeah. to where we could have a debate and talk and, and give thoughts on. So that's you're, you're right up our alley. That's not too far off. That's true. Uh, next... He says the game reviewed uh, doesn't have to be new. Okay. If there's a game y'all missed, skipped, and want to review it, you could do that. Okay. Good point. Uh, or maybe do a quick five games you didn't get to review, but y'all played and want to talk about. Those are those are not bad ideas. For and sure. And we, we wanted to stay basically in the beginning. Yeah. Chris, Chris came up with this idea, and it was brilliant, to have something kind of current. So when a search happens... You guys could find us and, and you could see how awesome we are. <laughs> exactly. Wait, is that not the reason? But you, you're right. We, we, we've got some peeps now. Yeah. We've, uh, we've expanded out and we're, uh, as you saw today, we, we talked about Hollow Knight, which technically came out last year, but since it was out on Switch, we're like, you know what? Yeah. John's not here. He's, he's not objecting. So pr- pretty much. John's lazy. Pretty much. If, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> kidding. Uh, if, if it feels right. I think you're going to see possibly that scenario come about a little bit more often than it used to. For sure. So we we'll got see. something someone wants to talk about. We're probably going to talk about it. Uh, he also says game of the year contenders for 2018 so far and what you're excited for in the second half. Uh, the answer is that we won't, we don't need a whole episode of that because we all know the answer is God of War and yeah. Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, John. <laughs> John, uh, shut up. Just dude. shut up, John. Uh, and then he closes by saying, that's all I have for now. If I have any more ideas, I'll let you know next week. 
Thank you for the podcast and game on, guys. Game on ever. Game on ever for sure. Thank you for writing in, and we appreciate it. We welcome your ideas, man. We, we love hearing from you. Uh, our last email this week comes from an idiot named John that what? might be in what? Charleston. Um, <laughs> he says, hey, Chris and Sean. Hope you guys are having a fantastic week. Hey, John. How you doing? Uh, he says, it's hotter than seven hells in Charleston. But a great time we are having. We visited Fort Sumter, Magnolia Plantation, and had some great seafood. I'm about to have some soft shell crab for lunch. And after, uh, and after, oh, I'm sorry, about to have some soft shell crab for lunch after our carriage tour of Charleston. Uh, in my spare time, I'm demolishing Aiden in Mario Tennis. Anyway, give the best audience in video game and my best wishes. And happy fourth. Game on. Oh, game on, John. Uh, I also... A fun fact, when I got Ooh. married 12 years ago, uh, we visited Charleston um, and also went to Fort Sumter, which is, to get to it, yeah. you have to get on a boat, and it's scary. Yeah, because um, it's off the, the shore. Yeah, it's yeah. out in the ocean. Uh, fun fact, uh, Magnolia Plantation is a beautiful spot. Hmm. Uh, I did not have, I don't eat crab. Do you eat, you eat crab? Oh, I love you're, crab. you're from Maryland. I don't, I don't eat a lot of uh, soft shell crab. I prefer the uh, the actual crabs. Know, crab. Yeah. <laughs> um, I crab. wonder, have we ever had anybody from the Charleston area write in? I don't know. Well, if you're listening and you're like, ooh, I am, well, write in then and tell us how awesome it is. <laughs> They're like, it's not awesome. It's, 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 it's like a six out of ten. It's ish. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, he's hit the one or the two highlights there. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's so funny. Um, Sean. All right. Uh, we got some tweets at, at Weekly Games Chat on Twitter. Yeah, we're going to start off with a tweet from at Baldy Pal. <laughs> what up, Baldy? He says, at Weekly Games Chat, Cobra Kai is not the best new show on TV this season. What? Impulse on YouTube Red is better I've heard, than hashtag Cobra Kai. I think I've heard something about that, but I don't know. I think it's a sci-fi thing. I could uh, be wrong. I don't know. We have a request this week, guys. All the way across the pond. There's a feller by the name of Nat underscore the, I'm sorry, Nat underscore the underscore Gooner. <laughs> you laugh every time I say that. Gooner. He, yeah, he's he's over there in England. So he's happy. We mentioned the England one in the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, he's Big happy news. today. He's drunk. So he says, hey, guys, I need your help. There's a new distance trading, trading medal in Pokemon Go. Okay. Go and gold is goal, huh? <laughs> and gold is one million kilometers. Okay, I don't so know you what got, that means. So you're saying he's got okay. to travel one million okay. kilometers in Pokemon All right. Go. All right, my wife and daughter have got a secret in-game Spanish friend, and are hatching eggs sent to them from Barcelona. Mm, suspect. They, they are mocking me because they think that will get uh, that they will get the medal way before me. Hmm. Could you? Give out my friend code on your podcast. Okay. To help me get some long distance friends and turn the tables on the sneaky swines. From Nat the Gooner, he put in parentheses, England. Now, uh, now Nat, I will warn you, we have <laughs> 50 million followers. That's so, not true. So I, I did say, hey, Nat, not a problem. And he responded with a soccer ball, three lions, and the universal, uh, Hands up, thumbs touching symbol. So he really is happy then. Yeah, because England is number three, three lines. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm gonna do Nat a solid. Okay. And if you guys want it, his friend code for Pokemon Go is nine two two zero seven five nine seven six four nine nine. Can the men sing hacking? <laughs> hacking on. on. <laughs> Activate. So hopefully that. Uh, so Nat now has the power of our podcast. Uh, to help him defeat the oh, sneaky swine. for him then. <laughs> oh no, Nat. We've got bad news. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, gonna go to follows now. Oh, uh, at give me the remote. <laughs> That's a good name. <laughs> that is a great name. Thank you for the follow. Following you back. Uh, at Bill five five four zero one eight nine eight one. Because he probably wanted to go with Bill, and there's that many more bills in front of him. So hey, thank you for the follow. Following you back. <laughs> at Jill or Gil Wonder. Oh. Uh, thank you for the follow following you back. At <laughs> this this name makes uh, me happy. Okay. Uh 
uh, at Richard underscore head two. <laughs> uh, thank you for the follow, following you back. Uh, which that one's possibly suspect. Uh, if you're not, that's funny. You need to tweet, but because I do it, we're going to follow you back. Uh, and then at C Garcia T13. Thank you for the follow. Follow Carlos back. Garcia. Uh, no, kind Jerry of close. Garcia? Um, I will see looking at his, his Twitter feed. He, uh, he, he, he wasn't happy about Nikola Jokic being ejected for something. Uh oh. In basketball back Why? in the day. Wow. We're getting a lot of sports fan on. Well, on because we, you know, we podcast. bring it up and yeah. we tried to tell John that sports people play tell games. Tell him. Dude, Harry Kane, speaking yeah. of England, admitted today that in between training for the World Cup, he's playing Fortnite. There you go. I mean, what else, what else do you need, right? Drake's got to play with someone. <laughs> <laughs> Harry um, Kane. You could tell the guy who, uh, who was sad about, uh, Jokovic that, he got 165 million the other day, yeah, so he's, he's fine. fine. Yeah, he's, he's fine. He's gonna be fine. He yeah. lives in Denver. <laughs> but uh, like Chris said, if you guys want to interact with us on Twitter, yeah, uh, you can do that at Weekly Games Chat. Chris told you you can also email us at pretty much the same handle. You can tell Weekly Games Chat Gmail dot com. You can also find us on Facebook, also at Weekly Games Chat. This has been episode 160 of Weekly Games Chat. If you like the show, subscribe to us. That's a lot of episodes. I know, right? <laughs> I've done 160 of these. Yeah, you have. You've done probably like 140. You think you were 20 in before I got legit? Well, then you missed a few. Remember, like, you don't do the music one and all that. Oh, yeah. Those are at least, what, three that you've done? Yeah. Yeah. They're good, though. I listen to that one. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I mean, I'm I'm, I'm asking. Yeah, you you have. There hasn't been a point where, like, me and John leave. Yeah. And do things. You don't do things. Well, remember... I had the one time where it almost happened and then John had an emergency. So we did it like Tuesday night and I was back because yeah. usually that's the way I plan it is I just, if I'm going to take off, I like, I take off like a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday. So then I'll come back from wherever it is on Monday and I'll be back and we can record. Yeah. So you still, it's, not like, it's not like we hold Chris here and he can't travel. You do. Yeah. Yeah. You it, get things done. Let's put it this way. If I, if we ever get to a point where. I needed to be away for a week or I was going away for a week. We would figure out a way for yeah. the show to go on. Indeed. Yes. Or else the you, show will go on. Or else you guys would just be like, we're lazy. Take the week off. <laughs> I mean, I don't care. If I'm not here, I don't we care. We would get hate mail and people would not like us doing that because they love us. That's true. You but, know how they can show that they love us, Chris? Well, if you have iTunes, Stitcher, um, Google Play, I don't know. There's like 50 million of these things. And you like the show, you can subscribe to us. You'll get a new episode every Wednesday, including this one. Yeah. On um, America's Independence Day, you're getting a show, people. Oh, where's Martina? Martina who? McBride. Oh, that's a, you don't want to talk about that Independence Day because that's like about like. A, yeah. It's bad. I think it's about like. Toby Keith then? Well, boot a boot in. Oh, wait. No, not totally that one different either. One. Uh, let's just not go with songs right now. Where's Lee Greenwood? Uh, that's God Bless America. No, it's God Bless the USA. USA. And I'm proud to be yeah, that, that one. Does that fit? I don't know. What songs do people play on the 4th of July in America? Uh, the Star Stangled Banner. Yeah, they play that before like everything. And also, games, and also yes, God Bless America. They usually play that. <laughs> and... Um, or what's that Brooks and Dunn? Living in, in America. America. Whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, subscribe to us. If you really like the show, give us a rating on whatever site you use. Five yeah. stars if you like us. Four stars if you hate us. It'd be so Fair. funny if on one of those sites that five was just mediocre. <laughs> and you're telling them to put out five. Of, it's like out of a hundred. <laughs> yeah. Basically, but, the highest you can give us, give it. Exactly. That should be your first goal. Please and thank you. Yes. Now. Um, (laughs) Until next week, I will simply say, game on, Sean. Game on, Chris. Game on, John, wherever you are. Game on, John. I guess in Charleston, eating some soft uh, shell crab. Well, that was five hours ago, probably. So he's probably... He's still... He may be poop gaming them right now while he beats Aiden at Mario Tennis. Because he's like, he didn't realize they shouldn't have gone to the suspect soft shell (laughs) crab company (laughs) down the dark alley instead of maybe the one that was on the beach. Stupid carriage tour. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> I like it. Like when I when I first read that email earlier, I was like, "Oh, he's doing the things that all American parents do to torture their children yeah. during the summer." Yeah. Look, we're gonna go make you see this thing that you don't you have, care about. You don't care at about. all. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, uh, my parents took me to Williamsburg, Virginia. And all I cared about was that Bush Gardens was there and I could go ride. I was going to say, there. like, instead of going to like a Bush Garden, Six Flags, Disney no. World. No, that was the last day of the trip. Yeah. Four days before that, I had to go see Learn all Colonial America. <laughs> Hated it so much. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, game on, John, wherever you are. Hey, hey, Sean. Hey, your mom's box. Peace out, everybody. Talk life. Talk life.